Hey, it's Harker from Play. In this video, we're going to talk about arrays. An array is a collection of data, and it can have any number of items inside, anywhere from zero, which is an empty array, to an infinite number. Each item in your array will have a value and will have an index, which is its order within the array. So take this array I've created here. It has five items in it. The first item has a value banana and an index zero, because your array will always start with an index of zero. The first item, zero index. It's a little confusing, but that is the way it is. The next one has a value of pear and an index of one. The next one, value of apple, index of two, and so on and so forth. So now that we kind of understand an array, let's apply this to play. So in play, arrays are variables. So you'll create an array the same way you would create a Boolean or a string variable. You go into the variables panel, choose your scope, and add a array type. Inside here, you'll name your array. So we're gonna create a new one and I'm gonna call it food. And then you'll select the array type. You have to choose an array type and every value inside your array needs to be of that same type. So if you choose string, even if you type in 600, it's still gonna be as a string. So we'll choose string here, and next you'll input your values, and you're just going to separate each one of them with a comma. So let's do banana, apple, pear, orange, and we'll do another banana. And you can add description as well, and that's automatically saved. So now that we know how to create a array, how do we use an array? Well, we're going to do it in interaction mode. So I'm going to enter interaction mode, and there's two ways to do it from here. You can either use the array properties in the expression editor or use a set array action. We're going to cover both of those in this video, but let's start with the properties. I already have an interaction set up on this card. We have an event, so this is going to fire immediately when I open my page. And I have a set text action on there, which is going to change the value of this text element to whatever we want it to be. I'm going to open the expression editor from this text property here. and the first thing we'll do is call that array. So it was called food, so we'll type that in. And to get a list of all the array properties, you'll do a period. Now there's a ton in here and we can explore a couple. First, let's do count. This is gonna give us the number of objects in our array, number of items in our array. And so you can see it already says five because we added five items. Next, we can do is empty. This is going to tell us if our array is empty or if it has values inside it. We know that it has values, we just added them, so you can see it's false. Next is the one that you might use the most often, and this is item. This is going to give us the value of an item inside our array at a given index. So if we do an index of zero, that value of that first item, that is the index zero, was banana. So you can see that's what's printed here changes to instead do the index at item two. And this one now says pair. So you can target individual values inside your array using this. But what if we wanted to take this to a more advanced level? And instead of just targeting one text element with a specific value at a given index, what if we wanted to target the text elements in maybe five different ones with all of the values in our array? Well, we can do that. So I actually have this interaction already set up here. Similar to the last one, we have a view event. So as soon as my page loads, this event's going to fire. And I have a loop on here. And so we're going to loop through each of these objects on my page. Each one of these is a stack that has a text element inside it. So when we have this text element, we're not just looping through the items because that would target each one of the stacks. We want to target the text element. So we're going to use this child at function and the child is gonna be at index zero. That's the first index because there's only one child inside here. It's basically gonna target each one of those text elements. So that's kind of an aside. Now let's open the text, the expression editor for this text property here. Similar to what we just did, we're gonna type in that array, oops, which is called food, dot, and we're gonna use um, item again. Now this time for index, instead of typing in a given number like zero or one or two or whatever it is, we are going to use loop, this action, dot item. So that's gonna target each one of the items again, dot index. So for this first item here, the top card right here, that has an index of zero. 
So it's going to use the index zero here. And again, that item, the value of that item inside our array at the first position, index zero, was banana. And so you can see we've added in the values of all of the array items at the same time using just one action. So that's how we use properties in the array from the expression editor. Now let's talk about the set array action. So I've created this other page for the set array, and you can go check out the template section to learn how we duplicated this a bunch of times, also using array. But we're going to focus on these bottom buttons right now. So for this first one, I have a tap trigger, and I'm going to add the set array action. On here, the first property is variable. This is where we're going to select the array. And so in this case, we want to use this other array that's called names that has a list of all of the different names. Next, you choose the action. So eventually we'll create videos for all of these, helping you understand when you can use these and how you can use them. Just as a brief overview, append item is going to add a new value, so a new item to the end of your array in that last index position. Insert item will insert a value, so a new item at a certain index. Replace item will replace the value at a given index with a new value. Remove item will remove an item at a given index. Remove all items will remove all the items in your array and turn it into an empty array. Sort items will sort things alphabetically or numerically. Sort by descending will just reverse that and do it in reverse alphabetical order. Shuffle items will shuffle all of the items, all of their orders. And reverse items takes the current order and just flips it backwards. So let's try sort items here. Now, when I tap that button, just check out what these look like now. When I tap that, this is now all going to be in alphabetical order. And the indexes for each one of these values are actually changing. So if we were to look at that array now, the first one is still going to be Amina. The second item is now going to have a value of Emily as opposed to what I had before. For this next one, I have sort by descending. So when I tap that, it's going to change the order and do this in reverse. And then when I shuffle, I can press shuffle a bunch of times. And again, it's just going to change the order of all of the values inside my array. And that's how you use arrays in play. In this video, we talked about how to create an array, how to set an array's value or to use different array properties in the expression editor. And we talked about how to use the set array action. I'm excited to see what you do with arrays in play because you can make some pretty advanced stuff. Thanks so much for watching this video.